Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and in this video, I'm talking about versioning AWS Lambda functions, and more specifically, I'm talking about uh, versioning in the context of using functions for Amazon Alexa skills. But topic is um, is a uh, universal. So if you're using Lambda functions for anything, this uh, this will apply, uh, I think, for that. So. Let's um, let's talk about the problem first, or at least the uh, the problem as it pertains to Alexa skills. So when you're creating Alexa skills, and uh, after you've created the skill and published it, you've got a live version of the skill, and you've got a development version of the skill. And the development version of the skill gets automatically created once the um, the skill goes through certification and it is live. But the setup or the configuration for your uh, the Lambda function that you're using gets shared between uh, the live and the developer version. And this can be a problem because if you make changes to your Lambda function, thinking that the changes are just going to apply to your development version, you're gonna be surprised when you find out that your live version breaks. So you, you actually want to have a different Lambda version for your live skill and your development skill. And you can do that by creating a separate function. And that's what I did here. Um, but you can also do that by using versioning, Lambda versioning, which is really a, a better way to do it. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So um, we're going to start with just a, uh, a brand new uh, Project, so we'll go ask new, and we'll just call this example skill, and that is going to create a new skill project. If you haven't used the um, the ask CLI before, that's what I'm using to create this project. Uh, I did a, an earlier video on this. I'll leave that in the notes, but it creates a um, a sort of a boilerplate skill that's just a hello world skill. And this is what we're gonna work with for, for this example. So I'm gonna um, just uh, uh, and then I'm gonna deploy this. Oops. And this is gonna push it out to the developer portal and then uh, build the interaction model, which is happening right now. And then it's gonna create the, uh, the Lambda function for us. So this takes just a minute. I'm gonna pause and then uh, come back when this is done. Okay, this is all finished. And now our skill is deployed to the developer portal and the Lambda function is, uh, is created out in the AWS Management Console. So if I refresh here, I can see this new Lambda function that was created for the, uh, the skill that we just built. And if I go out to my developer portal, I can see my example skill here that was created. So um, in the configuration, you'll see that the ARN that's being used is the ARN for the Lambda function that was created. And so if I went ahead and finished this skill and submitted it uh, for certification, once I had completed it, this would be the ARN that's used for the live uh, production version of the skill. And that would be a problem if you were making development changes that were breaking changes for the live version, because when you uh, make those changes to the Lambda, it's gonna break the, the live version of the skill. So you need a different version for your production and development environments. And that's what we're gonna look at. So a um, couple of ways you could go at it. You could create a completely separate Lambda function, um, but maybe the better way to do it and the reason I'm creating this video is to use uh, some built-in versioning and aliasing uh, capabilities that are part of Lambda. So uh, to, to do this, what you wanna do, um, first of all, note that the skills kit uh, CLI, when it creates the function, adds the, uh, the skills kit trigger so that the Lambda function can fire. Uh, and this is going to be important. I'm going to come back to this in a minute because there's a, something that we need to do when we add our versions. So um, to create a version of this, let's pretend that we've got uh, all of the changes that we want and we're ready to go live and we want to lock in our first version. It's really simple to do. You would just go over here to action and then publish new version and you can add a description if you want 
or just leave that blank. And when you do that, you can see now I have version one. And this um, this latest version here, this is always going to be the, the the version, the most current version. So the version that you're changing. When you create a uh, a version like we just did, version one, this is a snapshot of the uh, the current code. And this, it's important to note that this is immutable, meaning that this can't change. So that snapshot is forever frozen in time. You can't change that once you've made it. And um, the important thing to note on that point is that the settings get um, frozen too. So there's no way to, for example, upgrade the memory of a, uh, a version. And so you want to kind of be aware of that so that you, you aren't scrambling if you need to, uh, to increase the, the capacity or, or something uh, as um, you're, you're working with production skills. But I'll show you how to get around that in a second. The, uh, the other thing to note here is that you can't create uh, two versions of the same exact code base. So right now, if I went back to my latest version and tried to create another version, thinking that I would create maybe version two, I suppose, um, it's not gonna let me do that. I still just have version one because I haven't made any changes to the code base. If, um, if I go out here and make a change like that, let's say, and then um, I publish that change, I'll go, uh, dash T lets me just deploy the Lambda without having to rebuild the model and all of that stuff. So it goes a little bit faster. Um, once I finish that, so that deployment is finished, then I can go back over here and uh, I can create a new version because this is an update to the latest code base. So if I go new now, uh, I will see version two. So now I've got um, version one and version two. Uh, so you, you'll notice if you look up here that the ARN is actually changing. It's, well, it's the same, there's a suffix added to it. So there's a suffix for each one of the versions. So I've got version two and you could take this and actually use that in your skill configuration as your latest version. And then when you submit it, the live version would use version two. And then when you make updates um, to your unqualified version or your, your latest version, that's not gonna affect your live skill because your live skill is pointed to the, the snapshot for version two. But a, another way to do this and a better way to do this is to use uh, aliases. And so aliases let you point to different versions and you can change the version that the alias is pointing to. So if you have, for example, a production environment and a development environment, you can move through versions as you need to without uh, updating the skill with a new ARN. Because every time you update the skill with a new ARN, you've got to submit it for certification and you might not want to do that. So here is how you go about creating aliases. So you just go create alias you give your alias a name and I usually have at least two I have production and development so I'll create my prod alias and then let's say that my production code is version 2 I would set it to that version and create and now I've got this ARN which I would use in my production version so I would go over here and paste that in like that and Oops, I don't need to do that. I need to save down here. Um, oh, actually, this, this is a good point. So this error that I got here, when you create aliases, you need to reset up the, um, the Alexa skills kit trigger. So over here, the skills kit, and the CLI does that automatically when it creates the original skill. So if you go to um, like the unqualified version here, the original one that was created, which is the latest version also by the CLI and uh, go to triggers, you'll see that the skills kit, the Alexa skills kit trigger was automatically added by the CLI here. But that is not in our production version because I haven't added it. So you wanna go to your alias and then add trigger and then add your 
Alexa Skills Kit as the trigger, and you need to do that for each alias that you create. So I'm gonna create another alias called dev for my development environment. And I'm gonna set that to my latest code because that's what's changing and I'll create. And then again, I need to go set the trigger for that. So let's do that. And there we go. And so now I've got two different environments and uh, I will use my production environment for my live skill. So now when I save this, it should work. And it's updated, it did. So now when I actually submit this for certification and it gets published, it's gonna be pointing to this ARN, which right now is pointed to version two. Um, let's go take a look at that. Is our production there it is so this is pointed to version 2 and um, although I can't make changes to the versions like I mentioned before they're snapshots you can switch which version your aliases are pointing to so if I um, have an issue uh, a bug or something like that and I don't want to go through the entire recertification process I could update that bug to a new version and then switch my production alias to the new version and that would allow me to fix the bug without going through the uh, the alexa certification process again okay i know that was a lot but hopefully that made sense and was uh was helpful for you but that's how you set up uh, production and development environments using lambda functions for your alexa skills if you do have any questions or comments, you can leave those and I will respond just as quickly as I can. If you found this helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the Dabble Lab channel. Thanks so much.